Ja, das ist ein bisschen schräg, aber ja, ja ein bisschen dran schrauben. Naja. Ja, ich konnte immer noch drei Stück hochladen, bis sie dann äh, processed wurden. So, jetzt sind wir live. Das heißt, du müsst jetzt irgendwo vorne dann, glaube ich, ein Video auftauchen, oder nicht? Ich dauert das einfach noch ein bisschen. Ich kann ja auch noch mal gucken. Ja, wir können nicht auf der Hütte? Ja, das ist, äh, ah, das sind da gefunden. Jetzt habe ich gerade noch mal abgebrochen. Yeah. Oh, I'm jumping by it. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to do it. It's fine. No, it's fine. I can take it. Okay. It's fine. 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 It's fine.
good ones because this is healthy. Okay. I don't like to announce them. <laughs> But it's really, it's healthier. It helps you digest and process the water you absorb it better because it's carbon. So it's better, but digestive. Like. <laughs> okay. Small can start. Yeah. No, so I wasn't late. Yeah. Oh. Welcome. So yeah, so uh, welcome to the third Rhythm Fest here in Berlin again. Uh, I'm very happy that you're uh, all here today. Where I think there are some people missing, maybe they get lost, maybe they decided not to use the Vim or just to skip the Vim Fest, I don't know. But anyways, so we have a uh, uh, schedule for, for today, we have a lot of talks. Um, today, uh, here, uh, Daniel shows the agenda. I think you all have seen the agenda on the screen. So, if there is somebody on the period given the talk, then that's no problem at all. We can fill in the time uh, any other way, and we will just find time to talk about something or uh, just to, to get to know each other better. And uh, we will then have lunch uh, in between, I think, it will be 1 p.m. or so we have lunch about one hour. So there you can relax, have some dinner, uh, go somewhere, somewhere to eat. And then uh, after the lunch will be the uh, second round of the day. There will be three more talks. Then there will be a short break uh, so that you can uh, relax a little bit. And then the end uh, of the day, another three talks. And then how far we get in the end, maybe there's some time uh, where you just can plug in your laptop, um, show something, or ask a question, or show some special tools. So it's like a, a lightning talk, come, 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 on, come off session uh, at the evening, and then uh, after the day we will then go uh, have dinner at an Indian restaurant. We went there yesterday, they were very funny and friendly to us. That's why we decided to go to this place again. Okay, so uh, all talks will be recorded so uh, that uh, the other people not able to attend the Vim Fest are able to see the talks then. And uh, maybe before we uh, start with the talks, just roughly uh, tell something about who you are and how long are you using them and uh, just, just give a brief explanation about uh, which field you're into and uh, what you're talking. So, yeah. Okay, so <coughs> my name is Mitty. Uh, I'm a Ruby developer mostly, most of the time. And I've been using, I think, for seven or eight years. I couldn't say that I'm an advanced team user, but still it's my, my main editor and uh, I try to get better at it. So, this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My name is Mike. I'm a uh, sysadmin. Diving into a little bit of coding lately. And uh, I don't know, I've written a few things in C and C, and Java. Maybe I've done some Puppet and Ansible. And uh, now I'm writing this pickup. And I've been using it in quite a lot of Many years. You know, since I started this lesson, it was you know, just 19, 19, 19. Okay. Um, Yes, I'm, my name's Dan. Um, I'm a PHP developer. I guess I've been using them for maybe 10 years. Um, although everything seems to be about 10 years now. Um, yeah, um, I've been working on some. Um, something called Factor recently, and I'm going to talk about that um, later on. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Sven. Hello, Sven. <laughs> cool. Uh, my name is Wolfgang. I'm a PhD student in Aachen. Um, I use Vim all the time, um, and I also maintain and develop a couple of Vim plugins. Uh, hi, I'm Jakob. Uh, I'm a 
I'm a Java engineer. Uh, I use Zen for all the other stuff except for Java. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I want to do a plugin a few years ago. I like them. Uh, my name is David. And these days I'm working as a JavaScript developer using Vim as my main editor for over 10 years, but still using a minimal part of the function. Yeah, that's always good. <laughs> and I'm there to learn new things and uh, to find out how you guys uh, solve problems that I normally have and I have no idea how to do. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, my chair. Also called Wiki Master on Twitter and all the other pages on the internet. Uh, I am organizing uh, the Berlin uh, here at the Berlin Fest and using Wim now for uh, seven years. And using Wim for everything. I still love it. <laughs> okay, then yeah. um, I will here. introduce myself also. Uh, I'm Daniel from Menschen Gladbach in Aachen, the opposite of Germany. I'm using Vim for four years now. Um, tried IDE Sublime Text before, and was the only one that I can use in the way I want. And like all others, I'm using a minimal portion of them, but it's still better than everything else, in my opinion. And yeah, this is the talk. I'm Neobin, I'm using Python, so not Vim, but Neobin. Some questions, so we cover everyone, and we are not lost them. Um, who has already written new plugins? We have got some already did. <laughs> okay. Um, and who dislikes Vim script for writing the plugins? Who would like to write in its own language like PHP, Java, Ruby, C? I think it would be better. Um, we will introduce a new remote plugin API using the message pack and the value on the front page. It's the first feature that uh, pronounce. Uh, message pack is an API uh, for exchanging messages to communicate between systems. So it's possible to talk to NeoVim and with NeoVim. NeoVim will talk back. And there are already a couple of implementations for C Sharp, C++, Clojure, Lisp, Alexia, Go, Haskell, Java, Node.js, Perl, Python, uh, and so on. And for an official client for Python, uh, maintained by NeoVim itself. And they encapsulate the API to talk with NeoVim, so you can write in your favorite language. and don't have to think about Vim script and other stuff. You only have to maintain three things. Functions, so the API of them itself, not the language. Um, auto commands to interact, and of course, variables to keep status and configuration. Novim has a help file about that feature. It's pretty short because it's not so much into it. Um, and they also have an example. I will open my on the first platform where I tried it, we are highlighting. Um, in every language, you have to import the API, of course. So in PHP, you have to write it as no client still exists. In Ruby, you can require the gem and so on. Import it to get access to the API. In Python, you create a new object, a new class, and uh, where decorated, you tell it that's, that it's a good plugin. I think in other languages like Ruby, you will extend a base class or something like that. And the constructor is an instance of the current NeoVim instance that starts its plugin because NeoVim multiple instances can exist, headless mode, and stuff like that. And you can save it so it exists the same instance. In this example, I have three options with defaults and one method that will update. Each time the plugin is called by an auto command, so I will iterate over the options, um, access the variables from inside NeoVim, that's how you can do it, and then was is the name of the variable, pretty easy, and update them. Otherwise, I will use my default. So, how to interact? In this way, you can write an auto command, it's a decorator on Python again. 
I think it's some other way in other languages, of course, because they, not every language has a decorator. And everyone using Vim script will notice how this works. You write the auto command type, like buffer write post, a pattern to match, like the file name. And then you can evaluate code, like expand the current file where it occurred. And you will receive the evaluation as an argument to your function. So in this uh, method, I turn this method into an auto command. Every time a buffer is written, I receive the file name and can interact with it. Um, this plugin will have the text file for the single file. I know there are already many plugins doing this stuff. Um, but it's a short problem to solve and encapsulate, so I tried this to get into this API. And now we can do all the stuff you like in your favorite language using the patterns you already know, using the APIs to know how to interact with file system, with REST APIs, and stuff like that. And don't have to uh, learn Vim script in addition. But still, you need to interact with Vim, like calling functions. That's done with nvim funks. So, funks contains all the functions. You can call the function uh, and receive the result. All of the stuff is by default asynchronous, so it will not interfere with Vim. Um, but you can also tell every function and every auto command to not be asynchronous. For example, if you want to update the buffer, it would be uh, a bad uh, design to do this asynchronous because the user can change the buffer and you will throw away its changes. Um, you can also output to the command line inside of NeoVim, so the, the messages, and there you can write out or write hours. So that's basically all you have to know. Um, it's covered inside the help files. So this way you can start writing your plugins. The structure is as follows. I'm using Petrogen, so inside of Bundle are my plugins, like this plugin. They have a folder R plugin for remote plugin, because they are not executed inside of NeoVim, but remotely. So a Python uh, process will be started for this plugin. And then you write the language, so NeoVim knows which language to use, and inside this you are using your plugin. That's all you have to do. That's the whole plugin, besides the scripts, Docker for README and init. And how do you get Vim to know that there's really a plugin? All you have to do is to do update remote plugins. It's a single command, it will walk through the auto load path, uh, check this folder structure, and generate a manifest file which is basically just auto commands, which will trigger your plugin script. Yeah, that's it in the base. The manifest file is our plugin vim and located depending on your system. For me, it should be. Okay. Ah, near of course, yeah. I'm still using Vim as a folder with the configuration as soon linked. Um, so, of course. Isn't it NVIM? It's not infinite Vim, right? Yeah, just to search if you want to see this file. So yeah, anyway, most of the language we heard already are covered, so there's already a plugin uh, remote tag for it. Yeah. Can you do something about the, the white whiteness by raising the font? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so most of the languages are covered like Java and Ruby already. And others are come, so perhaps someone is likely to write a um, client for PHP. And yeah, so this way you don't have to worry about Vim scripts and to learn a new language, but just three kinds like uh, protocol, the functions, the auto commands, and how to access the uh, variables. And that's it. And configured like any, plug any other plugin. So, 
you normally set your, your variables and can access them with the uh, um, bars. So nothing special for the user. You will not notice any difference except that he has to call the update with plugins command prompts after installation. Yeah. And of course, you already can test them because the code is in your language, so you can use the tools you are already familiar with, like JUnit or what else. <coughs> I mean, like in, in, in normal bin, you can also write plugins in Python. Yeah, you can embed the code or start running the code, but you still have to write print scripts to embed it or to start it and have to worry about all of it. And now it's really encapsulated with start a PHP process, Java process. So, can you declare um, like functions in, in Python? Bin functions? I uh, think so. I didn't try that. Um, the client itself has also a small uh, help, so you can you don't have to learn everything by yourself. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. in, at least in Python, it's just a new decorator function. So you find the functions, and you can call the function as usual. Um, same goes for commands. And yeah, another new feature introduced with this is that you can start or write a script in your language and start new one from within your script, receive a connection, and work with new one. So you can use Grim as a tool, as an API to process text or stuff like that. If it's helpful uh, in your own language, I don't know at least Python is very strong in doing text stuff. So, yeah, that's what they showed here, just how you use something. Um, yeah, and you can see if you are interested in writing an own uh, client, it's not so much. That's the file that covers everything about buffers. It's not so much, I think, uh, less than 200 files to cover everything a buffer can do, like access a line, a word, a column, and stuff like that. And yeah, so it shouldn't be that hard to write a client for your own language if nothing exists yet. Any questions? Would you like to try it out in the near future? Because you like your own language and wanted to solve problems with plugins, but didn't want to learn Lin Scrim and all the hard stuff, how to write an essay not here. And yeah, I think one of the biggest problem with Lin Scrim at the moment is how to test it. Yeah. It's there are types of testing frameworks mm -hmm. out there, but why should you learn another one and get another one? Um, how did you debug your plugin? Uh, when you have to write, was it just some print lines or? Yeah, I've introduced uh, just normal debugging because it wasn't that hard to debug the script. Okay. Um, you can see the, the self debug statements all over. Mm -hmm. And all it does is come in my own function, which checks the variable logging. So every can, everyone can activate the logging via configuration and then we'll just write a message to the normal messages. So you can call a message and see all the log entries because sometimes you will know, okay, why well, didn't update my, my text file? Mm -hmm. And so you can see exactly what's going on and can just write off again with the variable. Another question? Um, okay, so I see if you if you have your own language and, and all this sort of infrastructure ecosystem that's coming in with that, that's a huge advantage. But how do you do, for example, unit tests? Because I mean, the main difficulty is a bit of code in your language, but really to get the interaction with the editor, right? So how do you how do you properly test that? Yeah, I don't have functional testing, but unit testing. So I just mock NeoVim and test my functionality um, without NeoVim itself. So I just mock NeoVim and tell, okay, if the variable X is set, it should act like this. 
and stuff like that. So I don't have function testing at least not now. And I didn't find anything about that at the beginning of the year. No, something's out now. Yeah, now. But yeah. Oh, okay, so it, so it's like running the loop. So you have like a simulated new in the background. But it should be possible, as you have seen, you can start as a new NeoVim headless with a socket connection. So it should be possible to write helper functions in your uh, favorite framework to start an actual NeoVim instance and communicate with it and tell, OK, if NeoVim will, or if I write in NeoVim and execute in NeoVim, then my actual result should be. So you can actually start a new instance for your test, so it should be able to run functional tests too. That's what they showed at the end, at least for Python, so you can start a new. So how long have you been using your plugin then so far? Uh, every day. Every day? Yeah. The, the May main. I remind you that I'm not sure how well it is understood in the stream and what is being asked. So if you could repeat the oh, question. Yes. So uh, Matthias asked how long I've used my plugin since writing. Every day, because the main issue I had with all the other auto tech update plugins was that we are using Composer or Package Manager for PHP projects. And we are using uh, Git as well, so all of our sub-dependencies have Git repositories as well. And most auto tech update plugins are determining the project root with a Git folder. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't have one text file for my whole project, but for every package in our project, and that was very disturbing because I couldn't work with that. So I tried to use a new API therefore and using it now every day. And yeah, it's not in my way. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. And then we'll be next with this talk. If so, uh, no other further questions, then thank you. And I don't know who's German here, but I don't look too much. Yes, I told the story. My boss introduced me to a new book by Isaac Asimov, and I bought it on Amazon. And next day, I take a look at our bookshelf and find another book with a different title. And now I notice it's the same book, but with 100 pages more and other title, but still the same title. Twice, if someone is interested, I give it away for free. Anyone? What's this about? Uh, yes, Isaac Asimov is a uh, robot uh, and a murderer, and he has to find the murderer together with the robot, but no one likes the robots in this world, staying in New York, in the far, far away, and yeah, <laughs> so it's like a, a primary, primary from English, it's, yeah. So, yeah, no one is interested. It's uh, steel holds in, in original English, but that's the German version. So. I'm ready. Okay. I'm a huge case. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, if you want to give it away, um, I won't be able to read very well, but maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, I really recommend you start with something easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in German, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, after it. After it. Yeah. Like, you don't need the French call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then 10 minutes break, and then, uh, then we'll present the next talk. So is everybody here using Beam or NeoVim? Yeah, I've turned to NeoVim last year and never regret for it. Um, so there are some asynchronous plugins, of course, nowadays. But Beam is asynchronous. But, uh, 
and I read the terminal is also coming to Vim, so that's the other benefit I'm using because I have a Vim test plug in, so I can execute tests while right inside Vim and see the results in the terminal window of Vim. So don't have to switch context between uh, mobile short time with too much. Yeah, but then you have to switch between an actual section and my workflow is just a little bit. Don't not bother with too much. Vim can open, the Vim plugins can open a split window okay. on Tmax and then you don't need to switch one. It's okay. there already. Yeah, I've used that now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not criticizing. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was wondering, because I, when I looked at Melvin, it was, oh, cool, asynchronous plugins, finally. And then next week, Vim 8 came out. <laughs> okay, I don't need Melvin anymore, because that was like the key thing. And then you mentioned this, okay, no, I don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, I see some potential in uh, the API yeah. to talk yeah, to that's, the that's the main benefit. So it encapsulates the functionality of them as the text UI. And so you can embed it in your scripts and talk remotely and so on. No, I really so should that's that's I, I mean, but uh, the whole point also of new room is to be download compatible. Except yes. maybe with those support. Yes. Sort of, uh, mm -hmm. and you also, as a, so I guess if you have a really good infrastructure for Vim, it's not, you don't, it, it, you don't need to switch that desperately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everything I've configured and all plugins from Vim are working on Vim also. Yeah. Um, and I've only to switch over to Vim for the debug because the layout of the debugger is blown up some times at Neobim and I didn't figure out when it happens. So, the debug is the debug is debug for Vim. Yes. I was looking at it, I want to set it up. Yeah. And it should work with Ruby and Python. I'm using it for PHP, I didn't make it run for Ruby or Python. Um, I'm not so much into these languages, I like them, but my whole day I make money with PHP. So. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I will make it. Switch to go. Yeah. Or rust. No, I think we need to have a go. No, the, the API is really cool. Because you can use whatever language you want. Crap, another thing to try. Mm. Is there any Wi Fi? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking, and uh, we, uh, we should spend it on this wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. Ah, yeah, and uh, what I forgot to mention, uh, just uh, on the wall uh, behind you, there's a text pad link. This is uh, when you have something to share, something interesting, or found a link or something like that, just uh, post it there, maybe with your name, so that we can have then at the end of Bildfest some recap about the tools someone mentioned or the tips and tricks and uh, things like that. So uh, you're uh, welcome to uh, write uh, everything you uh, have in mind or to share for either this text. Seems to be now. No. What is now? Maybe Sven, Sven, our our Sven for everything can take no, a look at this URL. The uh, the internet. Works. I can contact DNS servers. It's just yeah. most likely that it doesn't set up at DNS. So, I would have on the website. No, no, the website is not going to be blown up. It's not. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Oh. That's for you. How is it done? No. So, no. Oh. <laughs> Okay, if not, uh, we also have an IRC chat. 
Have any of us some Paul Mac? Awesome. Yeah. And uh, Skitter, yeah, exactly. So so it doesn't matter whether you're using Gitter, uh, using the GitHub credentials, or just using plain IRC on uh, Freenet, then it's all you right here will appear here in the stream, so nothing's lost then. What's the channel in IRC? Uh, DINFEST, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, maybe you can all walk in so that we can have this channel for communications and doing the talks and the Google talks. It's been a while since I connected to my instance. I will have thousands of messages. What thousand messages? Can you use it about uh, Google Hangout connected to. No, no, this is uh, for recording for later, and then this is just uh, to use the webcam uh, and the microphone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, our next talk is going to start. Um, Dan will talk about using PHP IntelliSense features and refactoring tools in Vim. Um, I think he will, he will show some code examples, uh, talk about the, the things you can, you can do in Vim. And uh, as always, if you, you're having Questions or uh, want to ask then something? Just uh, interrupt him, <laughs> and and he will then answer answer your questions. But you can also then uh, preserve your questions on um, for the end of the talk. Maybe it will get answered during the talk. Okay, then so, go for it then. Um, so yeah, my name's my name's Dan. Um, as we've already been introduced. Um, streaming, streaming, streaming. Speak up for the streaming people. Okay. Hello, streaming people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm Dan TV on Twitter. I'm on GitHub. Um, I'm a PHP developer. I also develop something called PHP Bench. Um, and I worked on the Symphony CMF and, and PHP CR. Um, I was quite involved in that, but I forget that was a few years ago now. Um, so how many people are PHP developers in, in this room? Maybe. Almost. Daniel's PHP developer? Yeah. So two, two PHP developers, or <laughs> one and a half. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully this is still interesting um, for people um, and also interesting for me because I'm going to show you um, yeah, the Vim plugin that I made and yeah, my, um, the application I've been building and maybe coming from a different language um, you can have some suggestions or yeah, maybe you get some ideas or something. Um, yeah, so I don't know what is factor or what, why factor, I'm not sure which one should come first. Um, so maybe perhaps at first I just 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 shortly describe what factor is. Um, so it's basically an intelligence tool. Um, does that word mean anything to anybody? Intelligence. 
I think Microsoft might have invented it, I'm not sure. Um, but what that means is you have um, some, your, edit, your IDE, your editor, has a sort of deep understanding of the code you're writing. It understands how to interpret the code. It knows you know, what the variable is that you're working with. Um, yeah, and it, it sort of compiles it whilst you type and sort of knows everything that's going on. Um, and in PHP, um, this hasn't been something that we've had available in BIM. Um, although we've had things like CTAGs, and there's been some other um, projects which have tried to sort of do sort of um, this intelligence thing. Um, they've never really come to fruition. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting. I said I've been using BIM for like 10 years. Um, and every year, I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is going to be the one. Maybe this is going to be the, the thing that's finally going to do some sort of intelligence in BIM. And yeah, it never seemed to happen. So after like eight years, I thought, hmm, yeah, maybe I have to do it myself. Um, so that's that's why I started doing doing factor. So the things I wanted wanted to have were context aware, autocomplete. I wanted and one of the most time consuming things that I seem to, to find myself doing in, in BIM when I'm working with PHP was moving classes. Because you can imagine if you move a class and it's referenced in 15, 20, 100 other places, um, you have to update those references. And there are ways to do it, but yeah, it's not. It, yeah, it's very time-consuming, um, and it's really prone to error. Um, finding references and renaming references. So having a, if you want to refactor your code and you want to change um, a method name from one thing to the other, um, yeah, and you can kind of do it with a global um, search in a place. But sometimes you have a method that's really generic, and yeah, you can't differentiate. Um, yeah, um, the methods belong to one class, but those belong to another class, and it, yeah, it becomes quite difficult. Um, so having some sort of like intelligent um, way to identify methods belonging to classes is also very important to me. Um, class generation. Um, so in BIM, currently you've got things like uh, snippet generators. Um, which is pretty good. Um, but it's not it. And class inflection as well. So class inflection. Um, can anyone guess what that means? So inflecting one class from another class. So this is quite cool. So you can inflect, for example, um, an space from a from a class. So if you've got a class and you want to make it um, into an space, or you yeah, um, you can do that. Or maybe you want to inflect a test case uh, from a class. So you can sort of auto-generate test uh, from the class. Um, so the things already had, um, so we already had like some pretty good auto-completion. Um, but it, uh, that's, it's sort of dumb auto-completion. So it doesn't, it's, it's not intelligent, it just kind of guesses. Um, which a lot of times is actually, um, they're pretty good guesses, um, but they're not perfect. Um, one of my favorite features, um, in BIM, um, it's um, supplied by this BIM PHP namespace plugin, and it allows you to import classes. Um, and I think if it wasn't for that feature, um, I would have switched to a different um, um, editor a while back. I think that's really important. So if you want to, you type in the name of a short class name, um, you hit your shortcut button, and then it automatically includes um, the full um, expanded the fully qualified um, class name into the, into the class file. Um, Git grab, um, so fugitive. Um, I guess if nobody, does anyone use, everyone use fugitive? Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, and Git grab especially, um, it's really, really valuable. And yeah, this is how I do global search to replace every time. Um, so the file in Git LS files, you can pi, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, that's kind of annoying, um, but it works. Uh, Nerd tree is fantastic. Um, so Nerd tree is uh, the file tree, um, which everyone knows about Nerd tree. If you don't, it's 
really good. Uh, Fantastic also. Um, Why is it good? Why is it good? Yeah, what does it do? Um, I can show you later. Um, I'll, I'll have some, some examples here. Yeah. You've seen that too. Uh, Syntastic. Switch to A. Hmm? Switch to A. A L E. It's way better than Syntastic. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's some kind of asynchronous syntax checking. Yeah. Ah. Really, I was using the Syntastic and when I switched to my own device. Oh, God. <laughs> what a difference. A E A L E. Can you post the link? Yeah, can, you, can, you, can you post it then? Yeah. And I like the drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, and yeah, my favorite feature is argument wrapping, um, which I'll show you later. But it's just so awesome. So you have like a, a function with like in, with uh, several arguments, and then you click the argument wrapping thing, and it'll put them onto new ones. And you click it again, and it puts them back in. Yeah, um, that's quite cool. So. But despite that, I was still missing a lot of features that you get in, in our use, like, um, like in PHP Storm, um, to the point that I thought, OK, um, yeah, I need, to, I need to write this myself. Um, so in September 2015, I did my first um, version. It wasn't very good. Um, it's a complete failure. Uh, five months later, um, I did it again. Ten months later after that, I started again. Eight months later, again, um, I started completely from scratch and used um, something called the Microsoft. Yeah, um, Microsoft made a passive PHP, um, and that made everything much easier. Um, so, Factor. Um, so, it's two things. It's a standalone CLI application that you can use to refactor your code in PHP. Um, you don't need Vim to use it, um, but it's also a back end. Um, for text editors, so it can um, it actually features a, an RPC protocol, which I'll talk about later. Um, so this is kind of the architecture. So it's actually split into a, a few different components. Um, so for example, you have the, the code builder, which um, can idempotently, which can generate code, and it can also idempotently modify code. So you, you've got an API where you say, okay, give me, um, is, is anyone familiar with Ansible? Okay, so it's kind of like you almost create a manifest for a class, and you say what, what it extends, what it what interface it um, it has, and you can apply that manifest or that template to a piece of code, and it will modify it. It will identifiably modify it um, to reflect the, the properties of the template. Um, it's got a few glitches, but that, that's basically the idea. Um, then you have the code transform plugin, and this does things like um, yeah, transforms the source code. So you can, if you've got a, a constructor and you, you you just create your constructor, you type in the arguments uh, for the constructor, and then you can complete the constructor. And that'll add um, all the missing properties. It'll add the types of missing properties, and it'll add the assigns um, to, 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 the, to the body of the constructor. Um, another example would be implementing it, um, implementing contracts. So if you're implementing an interface or you extend a class with abstract uh, methods, you can implement um, the contracts and add all missing uh, methods um, with all the correct types that you've got this. Source code file system is basically an abstraction um, for yeah, listing files and finding files and moving files and things like this. It's kind of kind of like um, a file system abstraction. Uh, class mover is, yeah, originally it was a library for moving classes, um, but now it's become also a library for finding references and updating references. Yeah. Um, Do you know the whole? Class, class the file. Um, yeah, this, this is how we locate files. This is kind of the, the source code location mechanism. Um, and worst reflection is kind of the, the heart of the whole system, so this is where all the intelligence sort of comes from, and then Factor is the application that sort of, yeah, combines everything together. So I'll just quickly talk about worse reflection, so it's based on something called better reflection, which in turn was based on the PHP reflection library, with the difference that instead of using PHP's internal reflection API, 
Um, it sort of emulates it, but does it with a parser. So that you don't need to, um, yeah, you don't need PHP to interpret the code in order to reflect it. Um, but better reflection has some issues. In particular, it's very, very slow. Um, so I wrote a new one. Um, yeah, the, other, the SD, I mentioned the tolerant parser. The SD is provided um, by the tolerant application parser. It locates source code with an autoloader, so in PHP we have Composer. Um, and so basically what will happen is you'll say, OK, this is a class name. Um, you ask the autoloader where this class can be found. Um, Worst reflection will go there. It'll get the source code. It'll pass the source code, and it will return um, class reflection, which is which has all the methods, the properties, um, things like that. Um, so it's a tool. It can move classes, it can copy classes, it can transform classes, it can generate new classes, new classes. Um, it can, yeah. If you if you're developing factor, um, it can debug. Um, yeah, the, the frame builder. Um, it deals with references, renaming, things like that. Um, but also it supports blobs, which is actually really um, useful. So for example, if, um, as I wanted to do recently, um, in most reflection, I've got it, all of the, the reflection uh, classes are actually implementations, there's no space, um, and it's tightly coupled to a tolerant parser. Um, but here I can actually do this class and flex, um, lid, whatever, and I can glob all of the um, implementations um, and I can specify a directory um, where the interfaces should be, I can say transform into, transform into interfaces, and then you know, I've got 20 interfaces um, already yeah, generated in, in seconds, um, which is quite cool. Um, so, yeah. Let me give you a little demo of the standalone tool. So somewhere I've got demo. Um, yeah. So this is factor. Um, so yeah, you type in it uses the Symphony um, CLI framework. Um, as you can see, we've got um, all these commands. Um, here we've got a, a little project. Um, yeah, something to do with animals. Um, so we've got a giraffe. Um, the giraffe's got the neck. And this is the neck class. Um, so what we can do is we can say factor uh, class move. Let me move that to the top. Let me make it a little bigger. Um, the nice thing about factor is you, you don't have to type in uh, the fully qualified class name, you can just type in the name of the, the file. So in this case, we're going to move next. Um, what, what are we going to move next to? Let's move it to uh, body parts. So there you can see it's, it's gone and ruled the, the, the files in this project. Um, and hopefully, I'm not 100% sure. Um, yeah, so you can see, although we kept the name neck, um, it has been moved to use zoo body class neck. Um, yeah, and so now we've got this new um, body class and we're going to go neck. Um, we can also just rename that the body class neck. Um, let's call it what. Yeah, so it renames the class, um, and it renames all the references as well. Um, oh, it been speaking 21 minutes already. Okay. Um, so that, that, that's a little demonstration of the Sandline application. Um, but for editors, um, just recently I implemented um, RPC. Um, which I guess you know what that means, it's a remote procedure call. Um, originally, Factor just um, issued JSON responses and accepted standard commands um, as like a just 
things like the input over the CLI, so I call factor from the minimum plugin um, just with a command call. Um, and then pass, you, yeah, things called a JSON parser, so I just pass the response. Um, but this had some limitations in particular. Um, I had a lot of logic in the bin plugin and just was starting to become unmanageable. Um, and I wanted more sort of um, interesting workflows, um, which were beginning to be quite hard to implement in, in bin. Um, so I implemented this, this is RPC protocol. Um, so the editor will ask, for example, um, factor to go to definition, um, and it'll pass the source code and an offset, and then factor, um, for example, can return a command to the editor to open the file, and then it can return, for example, another command um, in that message um, saying, okay, um, that was a success, or whatever. Um, so you can issue as many commands to the editor um, as you want, um, yeah, and the editor can issue as many. You also get callbacks. Um, so let's just have a quick look. Um, there's actually documentation for this. Um, so, for example, let's go to definition. So this is under the hood what, what kind of happens. Um, so yeah, we can send this, this JSON string over, over standard in um, to factor RPC command. Um, I'm not sure what that's read. I thought we might read it. Okay. Ah, yeah, that's better. Um, so here we're saying um, to factor perform these actions. Um, then it's got a list of actions. The first action is copy class. And then we have the parameters, uh, source path. What we don't have is the destination path. So what factor will do now, um, it will realize that we haven't passed the destination path. We just run like that. JSON um, So factor will say, okay, so the input, um, the, yeah, the copy class it requires the <coughs> destination path and the source path. Um, because we didn't supply the destination path, um, factor returns an input callback um, action to the editor. Um, and what this does is it supplies the callback, um, which is the same um, action, the copy class. Um, but the de destination path is null. Um, and then we also supply some inputs. So we tell the editor that this uh, callback requires some more data from the user. So it needs uh, the destination path, um, and it needs a text input. Um, the default for the text input should be passed to the class of PHP, um, which is the same as the uh, source path in this case. Um, it's copied to and inside the file. So then the editor can, can perform that, that, that action. And then it will um, return the JSON response with the destination path. Um, so whatever the user did type in. Um, should be like this, I think. Yeah, and then it says, okay, so we've got the source path for the destination path. Now I'm going to return an action to the editor saying, open the file. So we've copied the file, um, and it's <coughs> the command to the editor to open the copy file. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the gist of, of the RPC. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of documentation. It's probably going to change a little bit. Um, in the future. Um, okay, any questions so far? Just wondering if the streaming has stopped now or? It's working. Okay. Just, just the camera might be popping um, off top an hour. And so does the RCC. You mentioned that it's generically, I'm assuming it doesn't fit in the language server protocol. No. Dan, can you repeat the question? Um, yeah, so the question was um, Does the RPC use the language server protocol? Um, the answer is no. Um, and the reason for this, um, 
is mainly because I think um, the language server is, is quite different um, from, uh, from Factor. Um, there are different features. Um, so I think if I just implemented the language server protocol, um, yeah, maybe I end up limiting myself to um, uh, yeah, a smaller set of features and not implementing certain features in, in the language server. Um, and also the language server yeah, has a different um, way of working. Um, so the language server is a long-running process, um, whereas factors with the PHP, it's a short-running process. You just send it a request, it boots up, and it closes down. Um, but yeah, um, I'm going to mention at the end of the talk, or I wasn't going to mention at the end of the talk, um, that yeah, in implementing the language server would be a good addition. Um, yeah, I think that might add some value. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly describe uh, Vim plugin. Uh, Vim script. Um, it would be nice if it was in PHP. Um, and the Vim script I find out is really interesting. <laughs> it's, it's great. Um, yeah, the Vim plugin bundled with Factor, so you can you can install a uh, Factor from the from the GitHub repository um, using your Vim plugin manager, and it'll just work. Um, in in the future, I think I'm going to break out Vim plugins into a separate thing, and maybe there's also an Emacs um, inspiration. I don't know if you can write uh, plugins with Sublime text things like this, but that, that would be possible. Um, most of the logic is handled in Factor. Um, and this is also my first uh, Vim plugin, so I'm hoping maybe to get some, uh, some feedback um, later in the day or tomorrow. Um, so these are the commands um, taken from the documentation, uh, the reading file. So you've got the Omni complete. Um, you can also very easily write uh, plugins for completion managers. Um, yeah, and then you have a bunch of, of, um, of mappings. That you can use and uh, functions. Um, so you can add, import, um, add a use statement, that is import a class, you can expand the class, um, you go to definition, get some information about the current offset, move files, copy files, transform files, uh, create new classes, find references, and all of these are based on the current offset, um, what the offset, what the cursor is. Um, in the future, um, in the very near future, um, it's just recently become possible. I'm going to introduce um, contextual actions. So you can just, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe uh, leave a RR on any symbol in your um, in your path, and then it'll come up with some options, um, some possibilities that you can, um, some possible actions that you can take on that on that symbol. Um, yeah, so. That's almost it. Um, so I'm just going to give you an actual demo of the uh, Vim plugin. Um, so it's, I guess the most um, important thing is the um, autocomplete. So here I've actually imported the worst reflection library um, that I mentioned. Um, so to start off, I'll just type reflect all. Um, this is the name of the class. You see it's not included in the in the class file, so I say leader u. Um, and you can see it's automatically included the the reflector, the reflector class. Um, and this is reflector the static constructor. So now I can implement the only complete. You can see that's quite fast. Um, so then these are all the methods um, that we have and also the, the properties for some reason. Yeah, then methods are f functions and properties are m because they're members, but then methods are also members. So okay. Um, so you said we say reflect class, um, and then um, because reflect class has a return type, we get um, the methods of the class reflection. Uh, so we can say get constants, get name. Let's get the Okay, let's get the name. What's that so far? Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so this is actually the wrong. Um, before I started this, um, I added some annotations to the reflector, and it seems to be returning the wrong reflection gloss for some unfastenable reason. Um, but that's that's the basic idea anyway. So that's that's um, the the auto complete. Um, and we've also got the the, the method um, reference wonder. So. So what I've just done is leader R R. Of course, you can you can have your own mapping. So it said it's found three literal references to class foot um, using it as git. Um, so what that means is that um, one of the things that I, did, I mentioned about factory is it doesn't use any indexing. Um, so for, for locating classes, it uses um, the auto loader um, for finding references and things. That actually. Um, Iterates over all the PHP files um, given a certain scope. In this case, the scope is the Git tree. So it's doing the Git LS files and it's iterating over all the files in the Git tree. You can also use um, the autoloader scope, the composer scope, and then it'll, it'll iterate over all the loadable PHP files in your entire project, including all, all your dependencies. And then finally, you can say um, using the NFS scope, scope of yeah, simple, which is kind of like, yeah, just everything under the project group. Um, yeah, and then you've got the three little references, and you can um, traverse them using the, the quick fix, the quick fix list in Vim. Um, so that's number one, the actual class itself. Number two is this use statement. Um, number three is um, what else? Yeah, you can also create uh, a new class. So I've just done leader CC. Um, and these, so it's, um, it's giving me a list of four variants um, a collection of the default, a value object. Um, these are actually templates um, which are defined in um, the dot factor um, folder, which is loadable um, with the XDG to XDG directory standard thing. Um, so you put that in either you can put, put your templates globally, um, in your home directory, in your actual uh, project uh, directory. So I've created four different templates here that you can create as many as you like. Um, it uses the twig templates <coughs> templates you need to so, okay create a collection um, and let's call it giraffe collection. Um, and then yeah it's sort of Kind of generates it, yeah. Um, then we've also got the inflection. So if I were to delete um, the body of this this method, and yeah, and I'll do lead of TT. Um, then I've got my transformation objects. So I've got add missing assignments, complete the constructor, implement contracts. So this class implements um, an iterator, I think. So it's a number three, implement contracts. Um, this is basically the um, um, Then I can add a constructor. So it's a function constructor. Yeah. Command type. Construct. Um, Uber. Let's see that type. So uh, Uber. Uber. Uh, Barfu, Barfu. Um, now I can implement the complete instructor. So number two, um, and it adds the properties with the types and, and the assignments. Um, and what's the final one? Oh yeah, so in, um, add the missing assignments. So you can say this. Actually, let's add a type here. So it's a standard class, Uber. Uh, so this uh, z equals Uber. Um and now you'll see sort of some of the introspection um, that I perhaps will do. So if I say add uh, number one, add missing assignments, um, it adds the assignment and it also realizes that Uber was a standard class. Yeah. 
why they didn't, didn't do it for the constructor? I mean, the uh, annotations. Okay. It added the private Z, for example, and it added the annotation bar is a standard class. Uh -huh. So, would it be nice to add this annotation also, also to the construct? Mm, no. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Like, um, having the, how is this called, the documentation? No. Uh, the doc blocks. Doc blocks, yeah. yeah. And have the parameters that you need to provide to the constructor? Uh, yeah, but this, in this case, um, this is sort of method. Um, this is coming from, so this is like method injection. Okay. You know, so I'm just for example, I'm assigning, um, yeah, Fubar to the class. It's not a good programming practice actually, but it's just for, for example. Um, actually, when I do that, it's much more often with a PHP unit test. So if I create a job collection test, um, then in PHP unit, I often have, like, yeah, uh, setup. It's really hard to type sometimes. Um, and then I'll say this foo. Yeah, so in this case, I don't have a constructor. Um, so this is actually the reason um, I made this, this transformation. Just so I can write unit tests. Um, huh, okay. I haven't installed so this is the error handling in fact, so the practice is coming back and it's actually showing an exception. Um, in this case, the exception is that it cannot find the source with PHP unit framework test case. Um, so it doesn't know how to um, introspect this class. And the reason is that I haven't installed uh, PHP unit like with, um, in this project. Um, okay, um, so that's almost it. Um, yeah, so some of the next steps I've already mentioned is the contextual actions. Um, I think, although it's, it's really nice not having indexing, you can never have to wait. I think in some cases it's kind of necessary, especially if you work with sort of, yeah, maybe with Type 3 or with, with Drupal, or yeah, especially legacy PHP applications, you know, the auto-loading thing really doesn't work very well. Um, and also, it doesn't complete functions, um, so this really only works with classes. Um, so language server implementation can also be, um, be quite nice. Um, in fact, taking a lot of inspiration uh, from the language server, um, yeah, maybe that could be the main uh, protocol. Um, but I also think, yeah, if you tie yourself too closely, closely to what the protocol, then you sort of, yeah, become coupled to it. Um, and I really want to do what I want and not just what uh, Microsoft told me to do. Um, yeah, and as always, um, the, the reflection can be improved, and I'd like to sort of investigate better ways of testing um, the introspection and. Uh, yeah, and then with the, the intelligence um, of uh, factor. Um, so that's it. Um, yeah, you can find factor in GitHub. Um, it's called organization factor. Um, if you want to install it in, in BIM, it's just, um, yeah, factor. Um, um, it's also on Twitter as factor. Um, yeah, you can also find me. Um, and if you have any questions um, now or, or later, um, yeah, I'm really happy to answer them. Is it possible to use the plugin to do um, code navigation as in C Yeah, yeah, that's that's a reference functionality. Yeah. Um, but again, that's something that can be approved, especially now with the with the RPC. Um, so I was thinking about having like navigation. Um, shortcuts so you can go to the parent class, you can go to the child classes, um, and you can really sort of navigate, you know, in a, in a logical way from one class to the other. Because with the C types, I found that if you have a big project, it's really easy to know. Yeah. It's real, too slow. You mean for the indexing? Uh, even for navigation. Okay. I'm talking quite big projects, but yeah, you clicked on it, three seconds later, four seconds later, it opens. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the good thing about 
the, the auto loading thing is that the, the auto loader depends on the standard location of the classes based on the class name. Um, so you could say, okay, where is this class? And bam, it will tell you, or it will give you a list of options. Um, so instead of having to search 100,000 different classes, you've got, yeah, maybe normally one, but maybe sometimes you have three. Yeah. It's actually pretty fast. Uh, you have mentioned a plugin uh, called Vim Arc Web. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. What is it? And what, what are you using it for? So Arc Web. Um, what's, yeah. Ah, I can't find the problem. Okay. So, say if I have, um, yeah, many arguments. Uh, so sometimes you end up with functions like this, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. clean code, yeah. And then, yeah, maybe somebody knows a really quick way to do this in Vim, but this is what I always ended up doing every time. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. uh, oh boy, no, tabular eyes. <laughs> um, so our work is quite cool. So in this case, it's mapped to leader AW. So it's a leader AW. Mm -hmm. Leader AW. No. Um, yeah, and personally, I think that's, um, that really saved me a lot of time. Um, quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think another alternative is split join because it's split mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. yeah. split join. Oh, it's a plugin. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's plugin. Okay. Uh, there's a plugin. Which one did you mention? Speed join. And I use tabular. It's <laughs> many, many, many plugins as usual. Yeah, but uh, it's quite useful. It, it does this sort of thing. So, for example, connect. When you have a function with the exactly what you just did. And also, for me, it's useful, for example, in Puppet. It aligns always the arrow, the references automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it's quite useful. It's super small, it's a ridiculous one, but mm. or it, it allows you to even do um, tables on the code with uh, pipes and nicest everything. Okay, any further questions? Okay, that's not the case. So then thank you then for your talk. Okay, we'll now have a 15 minute break because our next talk will be a remote talk someone from Spain and uh, we need to set up this this thing for the talk then. Really, it's really it's really very well I switch it. Okay, it's working. No, no, no. And I didn't touch anything. I removed some plastic instead of this one. Good, here we go. I actually have a copy of the little thing, but every time I stop typing anything, whatever, of course, the text is not moving anymore in view. Any moment that you type something, so I had to slow it down because it was too fast. It was telling me your code is not correct. So oh, well. by every letter that I was having. It was really annoying. I visited the IRC Maybe you can ask what I have to the pen. The new pen. And the new pen was. Oh, I'm with it. Anybody wants a copy? Okay. 
No, just like three. Nothing else. I'm not to tell you. Yeah, I three just works out of the box and sometimes yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, this is the Can I see Yeah, when you sort of have it, so you can switch the laptops. So yeah, these, these are desktops, yeah. Um, and I'm running so desktop six is actually on the other one. And then I'm going to go to the other screen. No, 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 if only it was a minimum sphere. Can you hear us? Oh, really proud of the thing I'm saying. 
<laughs> no, I, I just try to uh, because how I found things about Bing is by looking at other people's uh, settings and plugins. Yeah. Okay, and yours is awful. I don't yeah. want to look at it. <laughs> Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, so uh, we will be ready for your talk. We can hear you clear and loud. He's not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you feel ready for your talk, then you can start. I will try to get Yeah, we can hear you. Perfect. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, it's Catalan. Okay, it's Catalan. I mean, the Raul is pretty clear. That I never seen that. The camera seems to be what's happening there. Yeah. To the but yeah, so Seconds. Well, and so, so I, I guess for the I guess for the talk the delay is actually not a problem. Yeah, uh, and maybe the questions we can just type in per chat. Yeah, but now it's left. Mm -hmm. No, left the uh, Okay, maybe we can quickly discuss what we want to do for lunch because I think it's already. It's almost 12, right? Yeah, we just give her another chance. Yeah, but this is all not just for the answer to talk. So, there's not much. Ah, he's back. Hello. Ah. <laughs> German keyboard. <laughs> oh yeah, I may mention that uh, the URL of the text pad has changed. Please know that uh, at the end of this URL on the whiteboard, there's now a B. All right, and it's now pointing at uh, the keyboard pad of Mozilla. 
So hopefully that works. Please uh, try this. There's already three people connected now. Uh, don't forget to give yourself a name just for the chat thing. <laughs> I think he's uh, trying to get some sound from us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wish I could post my photos just directly on my but it's not happening. Oh. Ding. Um. The falls. Look the microphone. Hello. Hello. Oh. Can you hear us now? Hello. One, two, three. One. <laughs> <laughs> Test, 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 test. No. You're not able to hear us? Okay. Do you want to make sure of the different laptop? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the Wi Fi the mm -hmm. card is not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Performing properly? Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, using Chrome. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, you need three engineers. Yeah. Do we have another laptop for me? Try this one. Yeah. Do we put the hangout here on? Yeah. Uh, just uh, his uh, account. I don't know if he's working. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe post the URL into uh, ah, Twitter. I, uh,
Wobei, ach warte mal, das wird jetzt bei dir übertragen. Und hier ist das Audio drin. Also du machst das. Genau, das kann ich auch sagen. Äh, können wir auch machen. Das ist nicht so laut. Okay, Raoul, well, can, you, can you talk? So that we can have a feeling? Hello, hello. Ah, yeah. Hello. hello. Ah, hier. Okay, perfekt. Stereo kann man Okay, so. Okay, wir Okay, wir No. Yeah, okay. Okay. We can hear you, yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning from Spain. Uh, congratulations to that. Because I, I was watching your, your bed. And uh, I use uh, uh, maybe other things that are you're using to the love with with PHP. And uh, maybe uh, I want to repeat uh, something that that Dan explained uh, in his talk, but I think uh, I, I will find that presentation because uh, I know that, that Dan uh, uh, will explain some, something about uh, the results and I, I uh, remove uh, this part of, of the results from my, from my talk and I hope that uh, uh, I, I will talk for you, okay? I go to start. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, can you hear my screen? Yeah, you. Okay. <coughs> I put the, the, the URL of the presentation in the bottom of the, of the screen. Can you see? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, about it. Uh, I put uh, my, my contact details and I. And, uh, I'm a, a PHP full stack developer. I do a lot with uh, just with libraries like Angular, jQuery. I do a lot with Python uh, for Android devices too. I use with Swift and sometimes with Ionic to make um, hybrid uh, applications to get uh, <coughs> uh, deploy or uh, compile to <coughs> iOS or, or, or Android and we don't touch one time. And I use Vim uh, whenever I can. Uh, I love Vim uh, for, for many reasons. Okay. <laughs> uh, I suppose uh, Everyone in the room, uh, two, okay. I hope. Okay. Um, I I'm sure that that uh, everyone in the room know uh, why Beam is the best editor. Uh, I think the best uh, feature of the Beam is the fast text editing. Uh, Beam, Beam uh, has uh, built-in functions like. A contact auto compression uh, as Dan uh, explained in 
is in the stock and set up the place, see that I like and checking uh being has of the applying 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 uh, system to uh bring, bring, if it doesn't need a uh, higher system requirements you only need a, a, a very uh, big uh, RAM memory and a CPU uh, don't need Windows development you can, you can use them uh, for uh, uh, terminal then you can connect uh, so this stage and you can develop remotely without any problem you don't need a uh, mouse uh, then you, you can uh, work uh, quickly because uh, it's not necessary that you uh, put the, your, your hand into the mouse that is it's more, uh, it's, it's stronger than they use to just uh, the keyboard in my opinion okay but uh, this talk uh, is not about uh, the features that, that uh, everyone knows about about Bing. This talk is, is about uh, explain that uh, maybe uh, all the features that you can find in the modern IDs, IDs such page restore that Bing includes uh, you can use uh, any all features that, that you can uh, find of, of this index. Okay, uh, this is an index of a presentation. Uh, I want to, to explain how uh, I use uh, file management. I, I have a, a, a project tree that you can find in you know I just uh, uh, first you find the file finder tabs to to have uh, uh, many uh, files open uh, at the same time, see some replace. I think this is the, the, the all uh, features that, that is, uh, all ideas uh, need to, to have, okay, need to have. And set some replace in file, in all tabs, in all project, syntax, syntax checks and highlighting, code compilation in a generation, Completion, snippets, and edit. Edit is very useful for uh, web developers because you know that uh, we a lot of time need to to write uh, HTML code or any uh, any XML code. Okay, in PHP refactoring toolbox. Uh, go to declaration and return. In integration. Debug. If, if I uh, have time, I, I, I will explain some bootstrap uh, tricks. Okay. And now about the index. Can you hear me and understand me perfectly? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I need to. <laughs> okay. Uh, I see, uh, I watched uh, the Dan presentation. I, I see that uh, he used the the tweet, uh, to to get uh, explore the, the whole project. Uh, but I, I, I want to show you. Okay. Um, I prepare uh, a a parallel project to to the, to the presentation. Okay. You can see that uh, you have a, a project tree like uh, other uh, You are able to make a bookmarks like a project. Okay, it's, it's a, a bookmark to, to your project folder. Then you click on the bookmark. Uh, the bin will uh, change your, your current directory to the, to the project directory and the tree in the in the root folder of the of the project, okay. Then uh, you can see that I can navigate, okay, around the project without any problem. And in addition to this, for example, you can uh, create a, a new file, move the directories without any problem, okay. But uh, I can't skip this this part because I I see that 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 is is using. Okay. That's the, uh, 
you know that that uh, the the full uh, the full uh, project fee is is available on 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 B two. Okay. Then uh, the second uh, plan that I use to to find management, uh, I use in the past control P. Okay, but I find uh, in my opinion uh, some other uh, plan. Uh, F C F F C F, okay, falsify or find them. I I think it is better because it is a, a goal uh, program that is faster than control B, and I I think control B is not man maintain uh, project right now. Okay, then then uh, I should substitute the. the Replace the, the control by uh, falsify the file, falsify the file, okay? Then, for example, if I I, I put the control P shot back to, okay? Then, if I, I want to, to open uh, some file, just uh, write control P, and for example, write main, okay? Controller, okay? It's uh, other, it, I just like sublime or uh, PHP store uh, has a, the, the similar feature. Okay. Okay. Uh, other thing about file management is uh, the tabs. Okay. You know, uh, if, if within this possible open buffers, tabs, windows. Okay. I prefer to use buffers. I, I, I uh, use uh, tabs for for but uh, maybe a long time because I prefer buffers because I see that when you open, uh, if you, for example, open a file, uh, the same file uh, three times, uh, internally we open three different buffers. Okay, then I, I prefer buffers. Uh, then, for example, uh, I go to to open another file, and you can see buffers and uh, the island uh, line. Uh, you can see the island. I, I think uh, everyone uses this, this plugin. That uh, you can enable the, the buffers. The buffers uh, explode. You can see uh, the full buffer with yellow and the other buffer. And you can you can uh, use the open and buffers. You can navigate to uh, buffer, to other buffer. You can go to the previous buffer with with um, okay. But I think uh, you you know this this is okay. Continue. Uh, such a place. This is a, a very useful thing. It is okay. For example, if you uh, want to replace the uh, file, for example, uh, a memory, I uh, my category. Okay. Okay. Uh, Raul, can you increase uh, the font size? So that, okay. we, that we can yes. get a better reader? Better? Better? Yeah, okay. that's perfect. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. So go on. Uh, it's a, a very basic uh, function. Uh, Set up the place. Okay, you can see it. Set no fault uh, category. Uh, at least for my category, you can use from the beginning to the end, it's the same thing, uh, or between two lines, okay? Uh, you know perfectly, okay? Uh, and in our project, uh, maybe you know that, that you have a good function to like uh, red or red. And, and to execute the command that can will set uh, 
in all projects. And when you can see the, the results, uh, right, uh, executing, sorry, executing uh, CW, uh, okay? But uh, I use another plugin that they uh, is in this, this uh, graph. This is graph, okay? I, I want to show you. But I, I can, uh, for example, uh, um, search for category in a project. Okay. And you can see the all uh, instance of category, okay? But for example, you can see that, that the web found one, one uh, instance in a binary file. You can see that, that he found uh, an instance into swap in file. Maybe this is not the, the best uh, result, okay? But uh, this plugin has uh, some uh, configurations like like this, the options, okay? Then uh, you have a lot of, you can enable recursive mode, uh, no case, no case. Uh, and in this case, maybe it's, it's better, except only for PHP files, okay? Then uh, I, I want to reprint the same search, okay? Uh, and then you, you can you can see that uh, he only find a category word in the PHP file. For example, the in the plate. Okay. And you can navigate. Okay. I will continue. But uh, of course, uh, I uh, show you showing you the principal uh, features of, of every of every project. You uh, read the documentation of of RIP. Uh, you can see that, that this plan has a lot of more things that I don't explain. Just for, for me, faster, I, I explain only the, the principal uh, features, okay? But another important thing in all IDs is syntax uh, highlighting and uh, even with clients, with clients like Syntastic, that Dan is using too, okay? Uh, and check, I check the syntax um, and not, I'm not only the syntax, I, I uh, enable the, the coding standards too, okay? And you can see that, for example, if I uh, remove uh, this, uh, the syntax tick, and see that is uh, saying me that I uh, have an unexpected, uh, unexpected variable because he need Okay, uh, but it's not only for 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 syntax. For example, I enable the, the syntax to check the uh, coding standard. Group. Then, if I uh, write uh, put the, the the break uh, at the end of the function the relation, then the syntax is saying me that the opening brace should be on the new line. Okay. Then I can fix it uh, manually, okay? But, uh, okay, I have another mistake. I want to display space found at the end of the file. Okay. I go to the board. Okay, then, uh, now it's, it's correct. I, I can, uh, Fix it uh, manually, and I can execute, uh, for example, PHP uh, just fixer from 
standard, then I, I say fix current file. Hello, uh, and he changed uh, uh, the place at the bottom of the, of the function. Okay? Declaration. Thank you. 
also a branch uh, that you can use uh, with BIM and PHP development is uh, the, the, snapping, the, the snippets. Uh, I use BIM snippets because BIM uh, snippets has a, a population of ultra snippets and other snippets. Okay, I think it's, it's very useful to, to have all snippets uh, in your BIM. Okay, then uh, I, I think you know uh, what uh, the snippet, snippet trap uh, is. Uh, other things like this, uh, in BIM uh, has to. Okay, one more. All right, for example, for it. Sorry, it. The, the, the snippets complete the the the, the, the for each sentence and uh, go step by step in in the with with the with the for each uh, right okay for example items as item echo item name for example. Okay, and whatever you want, for example, uh, you can write a switch. Uh, maybe sometimes you have you have a uh, very option, other options to not not just be in this view because uh, um, I have a type of house. Snippets too, uh, but I can select the snippet you want to use. Okay? Uh, for in this case, it's PHP Planet. Okay? Then uh, switch it, for example, uh, <coughs> okay. I, I, uh, I think you, you know what it's going to do, okay? I will continue with event, plugin, okay? This, uh, I think uh, this will be useful for uh, HTML files. For example, I want to welcome uh, plugin. I need to make one example. Maybe if you, you want to make some some table, uh, you can write table if are uh, in the uh, okay. for example. Then you can see that he consumed the table. Uh, Automatically using MN, MN syntax, okay. Or for example, or for example, it was a list like uh, item one, okay. Then you can sell it and keep asking you for the tag. That you, do you want to, that you want to use, then I, I want to use UL, L, I, for any line, okay. And then I want to, to delete all that, again. For example, uh, another use, uh, you, you can use uh, snippets and elements in HTML files in all uh, all code uh, files. For example, I can write I can write uh, this element. HTML, sorry, HTML five, and he uh, write one code. Okay, or using MF, I sorry, using snippets, HTML, first up, uh, okay, uh, 
Okay. And this is the, the meta and, and the snippets uh, to, to make a, 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 a text code generation, okay?
som just øh, som øh, deres just der yder yder øh, music in the file for example I I remove this is uh, slide then I I'm not using category class then you have uh,
pasa en los eh, exuberant citadas, ¿ok? Hay un país por you give it a citadas, because it's a maritime eh, project, ¿ok? Exuberant citadas is not maritime, maritime right now. And eh, another part of the of the citadas generation is as uh, Dan explained it, I think, because the uh, uh, you know, need to have uh, a uh, syntax file in it, a uh, syntax in this file, okay? But uh, you, maybe you have a problem that uh, it's not uh, agile that you are making this, this file uh, with every change, okay? Then, uh, in the past, I use uh, a, a, a plugin called uh, Easy Dash that uh, this plugin makes that uh, on every uh, write, when, when I uh, write the document, uh, this plugin generates the Easy Dash uh, automatically for me, okay? But I replace this, this plugin for my own function. I, I uh, I, I use the, the new features of the game uh, to can execute uh, functions in the background, okay? And I uh, make my own function I go to show you, okay? Sorry. The files, okay? C files. Using the new features of the of the new make version that uh, you can use a back, uh, a background uh, task. Okay, I execute uh, the the syntax command with uh, the options that I, I want. Uh, firstly, I I take the, the version of the build because it's, it's just uh, available the uh, version or, or, or later, okay? And I use uh, some uh, file to, to prevent uh, to uh, task running at the same time, okay? I make a temporary file and take it. Because I, I can uh, execute two times uh, quickly and to prevent uh, to have to task simultaneously, uh, I check this, this file, okay? And I use the, the options, I, I just uh, uh, run the task, executing syntax with the options uh, that I have in the configuration syntax file, okay? configuration. Okay, this is my, my configuration. I uh, save the task in the git directory to, to, to exclude from, the, from my git repository. Okay, the procedure exclude git repository uh, folder to the modules or uh, out of, of folders. Uh, uh, Okay. 
for example, I, I can do it slide. And you can see that this slide is modified. Okay, because it's a place for another one. And at the right, okay. Then at the right. Uh, I, I think all of the editors has this, this feature, okay. Uh, you can see in, in this file, in the file that I'm working, uh, what, what are the changes that are you making, okay. Uh, another uh, useful uh, plugin is the that plugin that integrates these changes in, in your project grid. And you can see uh, that uh, this folder uh, has uh, almost one modification. It's the big controllers, and in this case, the uh, main controller uh, has been modified. Okay. That you can see in the your project tree of what uh, files and, and folders has been modified. And I think the best plan for it is is uh, Fugitive. Okay. Uh, I use Link Fugitive for all for for many collections of the in the with the with the beam and, and git that uh, you can make I don't know if you use this plugin, but I, I hope to explain uh, faster. Uh, you can make all git actions just writing git, uh, for example, git status, okay? Uh, and whatever uh, you want, whatever command you want of git, you can execute uh, writing git uh, in the command line, okay, of the, of the Okay. But I think uh, the, the best way to, to use Fugitive um, is to see the status. Okay. Yeah. He opened the, the the window with the status, but uh, you can see the, the difference. Between uh, the, the previous version and, and the new version, that's uh, writing deep, okay? I can, I can see the difference in the other file, okay? And I can put this file into the stage, just writing dash, okay? Not necessarily. Uh, write it at uh, the, the file, just uh, press uh, the dash, uh, dash uh, key, and you can remove from, from the stage to just uh, pressing uh, dash uh, key to, okay? It's very, very useful thing. But for example, you can you can see the difference between versions in the in the play. You remember I, I made a new a new table in the, in the right file, okay? And uh, I can remove uh, the object in this file just pressing Q letter, okay? I press U. And Q is now saying me that I, if I want to load it's the file because the file uh, has to change. Okay, I, I, I press uh, load. Then, uh, you can see that, that uh, you don't have any change in the in the project file. Okay, and you can see that is not that is not in the in the in the in the repository. Okay, and uh, the last uh, thing that uh, sometimes I use is to be plugging. 
that, for example, you can see uh, on the joint of the log, a network of, of uh, this file, but you can, for example, go to to one uh, set at You can see the change, the differences between, uh, between the, the file before this change and after this change, okay, with Jimmy. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, I suppose that, that, you, that you know, that you know, uh, if we, uh, with I have a, a lot of windows open, and I, 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 I want uh, to keep just one window. You have one comment that is called only or or that you can close the other window. Okay. Is that is that closing buffers or is that closing tabs? Uh, if, if you want to close, if you are using tabs, uh, you can use uh, another another. Uh, Another comment, uh, I think it's tabs. Uh, tab only, yeah. Tab only, okay. It's, it's the same thing. If you have, for example, 10 tabs and you uh, want to keep just the current tab, you uh, write tab only and uh, you close the other uh, uh, tabs, tabs, okay? Uh, that don't use the, the, the Google, uh, 
use just uh, things like like uh, echo, Bartar. Uh, uh, I think it's not necessary because I, I can use this this debug. Uh, but I think it's very useful because sometimes if you write the code correctly, you use uh, a lot of functions that are are calling uh, on another function, another function that is very very easy. Uh, to, to, to make the, the, the trace uh, with this debug system, okay? And uh, you, you uh, it, it's better that, that uh, write uh, things like echo because when, when you are debugging things, writing uh, echo like that, for example, you are modifying your, your, your code. Then uh, maybe it is you are not adjusting the, the, the real code for introducing new new light. Maybe you are making a change with this It's better to use uh, in my opinion uh, always that you can uh, add a word. Okay. Then you can uh, press F five to continue. Okay. And uh, if you can remove this whole uh, the development of the, of the bar, you can press F6 and you return to the to the current file. And I want to show you again because this is a very, this is a very useful thing. Uh, I want to show you another example. For example, I will press the file again and I refresh the, the page. I want to I want to press F5, uh, new category, F2, I want to get into the, the, the function, for example, F3, okay, I want to continue, I want to continue, I want to continue, then the, the, the group open a, a, a lot of a lot of files uh, that, it, that are not uh, files of our project. I, I want to continue again. Open another file, open another file, open another file. On that then it's, it's a very really useful thing that you can press F5, continue, and when you press F6, this file will remove all uh, the, the files that you have the movie and uh, you talk to, to, your, to your project. Okay? Then I, I go to remove the red point. Okay, this is a, a I think some some things uh, a lot of things that I explain you you know, but but uh, this talk is, is focused uh, in, to show that you, you can have uh, all things that, that uh, I discuss and uh, sometimes some, something that uh, the current I doesn't have. For example, uh, a very useful thing is You know that, that uh, a, 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 lot, a lot of times you are uh, using uh, things like I want to delete uh, the function, uh, the lines into the function. And then um, you can count uh, one, two, three, four, or you can use relative numbers and address. Uh, sorry. Because I, I can see the number of the of the lines using relative number. Okay. You can remove this. Okay. This is uh, another uh, useful thing that you have that you have uh, in print and you don't have any other ideas. Is that a, 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 a Use the commands into the bin containers. Okay. For example, uh, I don't do the.
should I, I think they want to change change into God and I can write what I want. But I can I can believe that uh, all the content into the dark, delete into that. Okay. Or delete the entire dark, delete around the dark. Okay. This is a, a, a very useful thing for what the developers because you know. We are uh, using uh, out of uh, times uh, HTML uh, files or uh, HTML files that, that and, and sometimes you, uh, for example, you want to delete uh, all, all the things that are into the, into the tag and the tag uh, has a lot of things. You need to identify what is the end of the tag, but this is very for example, I can uh, copy uh, Jan into track and I can paste right now. Okay. I think you know this it, it, it's been uh, okay. Another uh, another useful thing that I use is that for example uh, I close the view. I open the project here. I open welcome the play, and I can redo. Okay. This is the first step. I do. Okay. Uh, I, I think I, I, it's a very useful thing that you can uh, close it. The, the, without any problem, and when I run again, I have the, the after two uh, history. Okay, I have this history to, to use. Okay, and finally, uh, it use and do branches. Okay, what what is a do branches? Uh, I want to open another file like, for example. Uh, this file, I think I don't modify it. Uh, okay, I don't, I, I never modify this, this file, okay? The, uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, write bar. Is GNDO a plugin or is that? Yeah, yeah. 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 You, can, you, you can see how it is a plugin. Okay. And for example, I 
Missing semicolon? Yeah. No. I have this in color. Oh, you, you can't put um, variables in a class if they're not in a method? Use variables, you have to define their class properties with var or the visibility. Okay, uh, one moment. But you should not use var, it's from PHP 4 and it <laughs> falls back to public. So. <laughs> I think that we have 
the state that you are. At this point, I, I make this. If you remember, at this point, I make a group one time, two times, and then I write. Slide somewhere and share it with us? I upload it. I want to share my screen again for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see. Ah, the first page, okay. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Maybe we can put it in the IRC then. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we'll just. Thanks for your time and your effort in preparing the talk. And we will have lunch now. Yeah. <laughs> I think most of them are now very hungry yeah. after getting so much information. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, 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 I,
this talk. Uh, I, I think it's a very interesting talk. Um, uh, I, I want to, to ask uh, uh, some questions about the intelligence and autocomplete code, because uh, I use every day with me the development. <laughs> I knew BIM was doing this and I used this functionality just to go before one hour.